We'll begin our discussion of access points at the first item on the list, which is access points. Later on we'll look at maps, although we can't really do anything with maps until we have access points joined, so we'll look at that a bit later. We'll also be discussing mesh, and once again, until we have access points and a more mature system, we can't really do anything with mesh, so we can't touch too much on that here. The more advanced options that we look at under services we'll cover in the next couple of modules. So the first thing we will look at under access points then is the access points themselves. And so of course we don't have anything here because we haven't gone through registration yet. But as soon as we do get some access points joining the zone director, they'll pop in here and we will come back once we have got some access points registered. Likewise with access point groups, we can't really do anything at this point with groups until we've got some access points registered. So we'll skip through that until later on as well. However, this is now where we start to look at something that is important regarding the access point registration process. And this is the approval policy. Automatically approve all join requests from access points means that as soon as an access point contacts the zone director, it will automatically download and update its firmware and also the configuration settings. If we don't want this to happen, for example, if we've got access points in the same layer 2 network and we don't want them to be automatically adopted, then we should take the tick out of this box here. And what that does, it means the access point goes into a standby state, contacts the zone director but won't actually do any configuration changes or configuration settings until we manually approve. Well, the access point approval policy is enabled by default. The next setting is the limited zone director discovery. Well, limited zone director discovery means that we're telling the access points only to connect to specific zone directors. This is used when we have a primary and secondary zone director. So the second zone director is working in a failover mode if the primary zone director does in fact go offline. Now this isn't smart redundancy. We will look at smart redundancy a little bit later on and what that offers. This is just if we have a primary and secondary controller. We can tell the access points to prefer a primary zone director over a secondary zone director and we can also tell the access points to keep those primary and secondary zone director settings. It's disabled by default. You can see here when we toggle it on as enabled that some of these other settings come alive. I do have to say though a better strategy for your network is to use smart redundancy which we will look at a little bit later. Next we have the management VLAN and the management VLAN is the VLAN ID that the access points will connect to the control interface and when we say the control interface this is the network interface that the access points will connect to the zone director controller to receive updates and to pass info back to the controller now by default the management vlan is the one that's used but you can specify that to go onto a different vlan quite commonly what happens here when people have problems is that people will connect their uh, access points they will be pushed onto a different vlan and then that vlan doesn't have connectivity back to the interface where it needs to make the connection and do the update so if you do have problems then do uh, refer back to here VLAN ID is one of those possible sources of problems. The tunnel MTU, this is the MTU size, this is fine where you have a, a local fast um, network, a layer 2 connectivity within the same building. If your access points are connecting to the zone director over a WAN link for example then we recommend that you change this setting down to 12 or 1300. The auto recovery setting reboots the access point if it's disconnected from a zone director for more than 30 minutes. There may be reasons for doing this, so you have to look at this in terms of your bigger strategy in terms of what you would like to protect, your network downtime, what sort of networks you are uh, configuring and so on. And so remember this when we go to look at the WLANs a little bit later on, the different WLAN types. Basically, do you want a WLAN to be autonomous to stay up if the zone director and the access points lose connection with each other? Or do you want to have everything fully managed and basically not operational if the zone director is no longer able to manage the access points? So that becomes part of your redundancy strategy. And finally here, the access point USB software packages. 
This is a bit of an advanced subject and it's really outside the scope of this course, but just to let you know that uh, there are certain access points that have USB ports and they can be configured to support 3G, 4G LTE and WiMAX uh, wireless USB. And so this is where we, we basically do some configurations and import of packages there. So it's outside the scope of this course. There are more details in the administration guide if you'd like to know more information about that. Well, after access points, the next item on the list is maps. And I mentioned previously, we can't really do very much with maps until we get some access points into the system. So we will revisit this a little bit later on. After maps, we'll scroll down to mesh. And once again, well, I will do a short module on meshing later on. But uh, just to note here, this is where we enable meshing. One thing to remember is that once you enable mesh, it's a one-way step and you cannot then go back and disable mesh. The only way to stop meshing is to do a factory reset. So you shouldn't enable meshing unless you absolutely necessarily need it. And the reason for this is because access points will always look for mesh partners. And if they don't exist because you're not using mesh, it's just a waste of resources. So please don't enable mesh until you need it. The art broadcast filter is used when we are using meshing. So again, I'll review these settings when we do the module on mesh. And that brings us to the end of this section where we've looked at access points, maps and mesh. In the next section, we'll look at some of the more advanced settings under services. Mm -hmm.